If you think of something sad, your eyes will fill up with tears. Think of food and your tummy rumbles because you're thinking a thought and your mind is responding to the thought. What you think of a drug has more of an effect on your body than what the drug is. So we already know this works. So Dr. J.B. Mosley wanted to examine just how powerful the placebo effect could be. He got these 10 volunteers and only two of them had the actual surgery. The other eight were made to believe mm -hmm. they had the surgery. Direct, instruct, command, compel, and code. code. Yeah. Did you really have to call it the dick technique? So I thought, well, that's actually better calling it dick energy. Direct, <laughs> instruct. People think it's woo, -woo but it's not. If you can see it, your mind can achieve it. So let's talk about cancer because you've mm. bounced back from cancer twice. Yeah. Tell us that story. I went to see this doctor who was giving me the diagnosis and I said to her, will it come back? And she literally did this. It has your address. It knows where you live. When I had womb cancer, my first thought was, well, that's a stroke of luck because I don't need a womb. I mean, how lucky am I to have it in my <laughs> womb? When nothing works, you have to do something different. These little things are so simple, yet they are immensely powerful. You're changing everything at a cellular level. The way you feel about everything, bar none, is down to only two things. We have really no idea how powerful we are. I was shopping at a Christmas market in Portobello Road, which is actually shut to traffic on a Saturday. So it was a bit of a shock. This car came past me and it hit me in the back. But then it kept going and then, then he knocked me over. Then I went under the car and it ran over my leg. It was mostly my foot, my ankle and my lower leg. And he did drive away, but my husband, luckily, it was, it was a market. There's lots of people. My husband caught up with him. So that was a kind of traumatic. But I sort of thought I'd just go to hospital and put my leg in a car and I'd go home. So I was a bit shocked. And then, oh, no, this is like really, really one of the worst fractures I've ever seen. You can't walk for like five to six months. You're going to be in a cast and then a boot. And actually, the first thing that happened was when they... I was in hospital and they said, you're going to have to have a skin graft because the oh, skin is wow. dying. You're going, to have to have, you're going to have to have a frame put on your leg. And I didn't want that. So I immediately started to command my leg to heal itself, command my skin to grow back, command my foot to start doing the work. So when I did go down for the surgery, when I came back, this was amazing. The skin's completely healed, didn't need a frame, a lot of pins and plates. I understand the power of the mind. People think it's woo-woo, but it's not. Your mind every day tells your body what to do. That's its job. So for instance, if you think of something sad, your eyes will fill up with tears. If you think of something embarrassing, you might go right. Think of food and your tummy rumbles because you're thinking a thought and your mind is responding to the thought. And if you doubt that, think of the placebo effect. What you think of a drug has more of an effect on your body than what the drug is. And the placebo effect is getting more powerful every year. So we already know this works. You think a thought, your body makes it real. That's a fact. But here's another fact. If your mind's job is to make your thoughts real, your job is to think better thoughts all the time. Let's let's stop there because that's a powerful point. Your job is to think better thoughts, thoughts. All, the all the time. And, and we want to go deeper there. So Dr. J.B. Mosley wanted to examine just how powerful the placebo effect could be. Working with the Veterans Administration, he identified 10 American veterans, meaning men who had served in wars, who were suffering from arthritis of the knee. Mm. And these men were having great difficulty walking. And there was a known surgery where they operate on the knee to clean up this mm -hmm. condition. He got these 10 volunteers and only two of them had the actual surgery. The other eight were made to believe mm. they had the surgery. They were put under anesthesia. Incisions were made in their knee. These incisions were sewed mm. up. They were bandaged up. So they had a bandage. They were convinced they had had the surgery. Two months later, all 10 of these patients no longer had arthritis of the knee. Yeah. The surgery couldn't beat the placebo. Mm. And what JB Mosley spoke about is, Look how powerful our mind is. Because these patients believed their knees had mm. healed, because they believed that they'd just gone through this expensive, sophisticated mm. surgery, their pain and their illness and their arthritis literally disappeared. What happens there is because they believe it, their mind is now acting on those beliefs. Their mind is healing the knee, removing arthritis because of a belief. So when you have, you know, in England, for instance, you're not allowed now in a surgery to say, oh, my God, this is terrible. What a mess in here. Because we know that even under anesthesia, mm. the mind is tuning in and it hears stuff and it acts on what it hears. And so it's so important that you're doing great. This has been a massive success. Even with cancer, it's terribly important. You know, in England, they will not give you now a time frame. They're not allowed to say you've got 10 months to live because people turn into that expectation. They no longer say that because it was so powerful that people will be coming their life expectancy. When they don't tell them, 
they can't become that. That's so. Let's talk about cancer because you've mm. bounced back from cancer twice. Yeah. Tell us that story. So the first time I had womb cancer and I was perfectly well, I was completely shocked when they told me, but something rather alarming happened then. I, I went to see this doctor who was giving me the diagnosis. I, I didn't actually believe it was real. And I said to her, will it come back? And she literally did this. It has your address. It knows where you live. It will probably come back, which I thought mm. was a terrible, terrible thing to do. But even then I understood something. You must not let this in. Do not let, when I was told I could never have children, I didn't let it in. I heard a voice in my head say, don't let that in. And that voice has been such a great friend to me. When I had womb cancer, my first thought was, well, that's a stroke of luck because I don't need a womb. I mean, if I could get it anywhere, how lucky am I to have it in my <laughs> womb? I, I don't need a womb. My womb gave me a great baby. She's now grown up. And so I didn't. I felt very lucky. I, I love got your it positive a, enthusiasm. Yeah, well, you know, the weird thing is that it starts being what you do, but then it becomes who you are. So I, I felt very lucky that it was an, an organ I didn't need ever again. But of course, then they went, well, now when we remove the womb, some of the cancer cells can spill out and then it can go to the liver. So with the best meaning in the world, doctors do terrify you. So I had, I imagined my womb wrapped up in cling film, or you might call it saran wrap. I reminded it, I imagined it like a fortress that I told my body to surround it so that when they removed it, no cancer cells could. But I had a conversation with my womb. I said, look, you've done a great job. You've given me a great baby. She's now grown up, but I've got to be here for that great baby. So I got to let you go. I, I had a conversation. I said goodbye to it, but I imagined it leaving totally every single cell left with it. I also imagined, because when I first got diagnosed, I didn't know the stage. So it's very important to imagine a whole barricade around my womb so it couldn't spread because mm -hmm. first stage cancer is not really an issue. It hasn't gone anywhere. That, But they do tear it. Oh, it could go to the liver. It could go to the kidneys. And so that was very important. And then I went in. I had it removed. I went home the next day and I felt like, oh, I had cancer. Now I don't have cancer. People would say to me, oh, I'm a cancer survivor too. And I'm like, no, I'm not a cancer survivor. I don't have it. I didn't ever want to join a group. I don't I think those groups are wrong, but I didn't want to go to a group and go, oh, well, my cancer, because I'm a great believer that do not call anything you want to be free of mine, not my migraine, my cancer, my irritable bowel, because if you call something mine, you own it. It's an ownership mm -hmm. word. You might say, this is my kid. This is my home. Now I've got my irritable bowel. I've got my tension headaches. So I didn't want to be a cancer survivor or talk about my cancer. And I correct people all the How time. How did you refer to it then? The. You the, see, the, the, cancer. the cancer. I remember you correcting me on this. Uh, we bumped into each other in a, in a hotel yeah. and you asked me, how's your eyesight yeah. doing? And I said, well, my astigmatism has gotten better. Yeah. And you said, nope, don't say my astigmatism. Yeah, because you say don't want to own it. astigmatism. Yeah. And right. so l these little things are so simple, yet they are immensely powerful. You never want to call anything mine if you don't want to own it. People say, you know, my fat thighs, my cellulite, it's not yours. Mm -hmm. It's the, because when people say, oh, here's the wife, we don't like that. What do you mean the wife? Surely I'm your wife. I want you to say, this is my wife because I want to own that. So switch my to the, it makes a massive difference. So now let's go on to the exact statement that you taught me on how to heal my eyesight. Okay. Okay, and it was a technique that you call the dick technique. I do. The, literally the dick technique. Yes. And dick, D-I-C-C, -C, stands for direct, instruct, command, and compel. And did you really have to call it the dick technique? Well, did you really I have to be it, so inappropriate? I called it CID because it was an issue. It was command, instruct, direct. Uh -huh. And in England, CID means criminal investigation. We all know CID, it's like right. the English version of FBI. But once I was doing this, people didn't know what CID was, but everyone knows what dick was. So, And that's a good energy too. So I thought, well, that's actually better calling it dick energy. Direct, <laughs> instruct, <laughs> command, convoke, because that's very powerful. So most people like that. Some people are a bit shocked, but it doesn't matter. They remember they it. They remember it. And that's you the key point. Forget, you can't dick, forget. D-I-C-C, -C, direct, yeah. instruct, command, and compel. It's right? actually three C's and code. Oh, code, direct, code. instruct, command, compel, and code. code. Yeah. Got it. And you see, that's what you're doing. You're directing your body to heal itself. During COVID, people will come to you and go, oh my God, you know, COVID, there's no line of defense. Well, there is a line of defense. It's called your immune system. And by the way, you can go, oh, I'm lying in bed with my husband. He's streaming. I'm going to get it. Or you could say, well, I'm not going to get it because I have a fantastic immune system. It is a choice. 
Every day you get to choose how to speak. Now, you can choose to be super negative. I've got a terrible immune system. My metabolic rate is rubbish. I catch every illness going. You can choose that. Or you can choose to go, hey, I've got a fantastic immune system. I haven't have a fantastic metabolic. My digestion is amazing. My memory is incredible. So you never have to be a victim of that. You have immense power to change, you know. And if you're not changing your words, not changing your language, if you're not choosing to think better words, you're actually choosing to stay the same. The mind learns by repetition. That's another rule of the mind. The mind learns by repetition. So if you just say something once, when you repeat it, the mind loves repetition. If you want to instruct your mind, you've got to learn a few things about the mind. First of all, it only ever works in the present tense. You can't say I'm going to have great skin next year. It has to be now, right now. It works in the present tense. The mind's actually not that great at future pacing. So saying next year I'm going to have a bikini body doesn't work because the mind doesn't know what next year is. It must be now, right now. The mind loves powerful words that excite the imagination. I've never got that every day and everyone getting better and better. At what? Having tension, headaches? You need to not be ambiguous. You You need to make it powerful, relevant, exciting. Turn your mind on. Every day and everyone getting better and better doesn't turn your mind on. I am compelling, coding, directing, instructing mm-hmm. my perfect body to go back to its original coding and work perfectly exactly as nature intended it to. Right. That's what works. You know, I had a little boy who was Japanese who had very sensitive skin. And I called it sensible skin because he wasn't great at language. I said, you've got sensible skin, not sense. And your sensible skin knows how to get better. Your sensible skin will cure itself immediately. And his mother said, it's amazing. He stopped calling it sensible, started to call it sensible. And it was a game changer because the way you feel about everything, bar none, is down to only two things, the pictures you make in your head and the words you construct. So when you change the pictures and words... You're changing everything at a cellular level. Mm -hmm. It's so often just the language is not quite correct. Because our subconscious mind is understanding language in a different way. In a different way all the time. If you say, don't touch that pen, what your mind hears is touch the pen. Don't scratch my nose, you hear scratch my nose. I don't need to pee becomes really, I need to pee right now because the mind doesn't register don't. And it doesn't know what don't is. In fact, there was a very famous um, time when Nancy Regan gave all these pencils to children. They go, don't do drugs. And as they shoved them, they began to say, do drugs, which is kind of, I thought that was very funny because they should have done it the other way around. Drugs don't do. But yes, the, the subconscious mind hears language very differently, understands it differently. I don't want to be shouted. I, I don't want to fail that exam becomes okay. I better make you sick then. So you have to turn up rather than I'm planning to ace that exam. So you just got to reverse all the don'ts. I don't want to get rejected becomes I, I can only be loved. Mm-hmm. I don't want to fail becomes I can only succeed. I don't want to be alone becomes I'm always finding friends and attract because I'm lovable. So when you're using the what you don't want, you're telling your mind what you don't want and your mind is trying to work on that in a very abstract way. So the first thing is direct instruct, command, compel, and code. Yes. And then you always end with the word right now. Right now. And there's a third piece when you told me to be very specific about how I wanted my eyes Mm -hmm. to heal. I wouldn't just say perfect eyesight. I would say I direct instruct, command, compel, and code both my eyes, both Mm -hmm. specificity, to heal perfectly and properly. Yeah. Right now. Right now. Let's talk about that, the the specifics. Yeah. Well, you must be specific. I, I worked with a girl many years ago who got pregnant five times. She had a rare genetic disorder, and she had a 50% chance of any child she conceived having that. So she was using IVF, but it wasn't working. And after five terminations, she felt she couldn't do it again. And so she came to me and said, look, if 50% of your eggs haven't got it, let's go inside and pick an egg that doesn't have it. That may seem really weird, but I was having her imagine she could look at her ovarian reserve and see some luminous eggs that didn't have this genetic disorder. I mean, there was a 50% chance already it would work. And she explained to me all this medical terminology that her FSH levels must be one number, her womb lining must be another. And I asked her what she wanted and I coded that back into her. She had a perfect baby. And she wrote an in, she wrote the um, introduction to one of my books and said, but I didn't know. How did you know that medical terminology? Well, I asked her, what do you want? So many people will say, you know, I need my 
insulin level to be this. I need my um, collagen level to be that. I need my hormone level to be that. And if I ask people what they want, then I know what they want. And people come to see me and they're ill. I always say, hey, you know, if your doctor was here, what would he say? They go, well, he would say, I've got polycystic ovary. What is that? Well, my hormone levels are all wrong. Okay, well, now I know what's wrong. I actually so, know how to make it right by reversing it. So in the case of this woman who was looking to conceive, do you remember the statement that you had her compose? Well, I made a recording for her and I just kept commanding her body to pick an egg that was genetically perfect. Half her eggs were perfect, half had this genetic disorder. So I told her mind to pick an egg that was genetically perfect so she could conceive, carry, and deliver a perfect baby. Conceive, care, and deliver a perfect yeah. baby. Conceive, because, care, and deliver. Because that's another thing. When I work with people who, they say, I want to get pregnant. No, you don't. Of course you don't want to get pregnant. You can get pregnant 11 times and never have a baby. You need mm -hmm. to bypass that. You don't want to be pregnant. You want to conceive carry and deliver a perfect, Conceive, robust, and healthy baby. A perfect, so you robust see and how so baby, often right. our thinking is just incomplete. I want to get pregnant. That's only the beginning of the journey. I want love. How long for a day, an afternoon? You want love forever, so you want the right person. So, so let, let's recap those three things, yeah. right? So there is the statement that you want mm -hmm. to compose, direct, construct, command, compelling code. Mm -hmm. Then there's the specificity yes. in this example. It's not just, I want to be pregnant. I want to conceive, carry, and deliver a perfectly healthy baby. Perfect, healthy, robust baby. Robust baby. And All then the, the final words, thing is yeah. right now. Right now. Ending with right now. Where do we say these statements? Well, I'll give you an example that people do a lot. I want attention. Well, you can get attention for having explosive gas. That's not really what you <laughs> right. want. You can have attention for being sick, you know. And actually, I've realized that many, many, many of my clients throughout my long career have made themselves sick because they longed for attention. And by the way, if you're a child and you don't get love, being sick is the very next best thing. Because it's almost like love. People are worried. They're stroking my arm. They're tapping my vein mm -hmm. to put a needle in. I'm getting some attention here. And I saw that with my own mother, who was such a great teacher, who was always sick because she learned very early on. She was evacuated in the war and she was so sick. She was sent home. The only one who was sent home. And so many people learn, I, I want attention. I want to be noticed. I want my parents to love me. I want them to spend time. Then I goes, okay. How about being sick then? Because right. the mind isn't logical, it's a feeling mind. You have to be very careful what you ask for because you'll probably get it. If you ask for attention or someone to care about you, you're being unspecific. If you want attention, you go, I want positive attention for being an amazing person, for having a particular gift. You know, we, we don't really understand that small children, when they try to read in class and they get it wrong, they go, well, I never speak in public right. again. That isn't a fleeting thought. That is a direct command to the mind. Stop me speaking in public. And 30 years later, they go to give a talk and they have a panic attack or they get really sweaty or they get a headache and they pull out because the mind does what it thinks you want it to do fired at work, they get done, they go, I, I couldn't go through that again, ever again. And they're actually telling them, I never let me go through that again. Stop me finding love. Stop me being the focus. Stop me getting pregnant. People go, oh my God, I had an abortion. I had a miscarriage. I could never go through that again. You're saying to them, make sure I never go through that again. Make me infertile. As odd as it sounds, our thoughts are so powerful. There are so many people who deny themselves love, deny themselves success because once they got dumped, once they got hurt, once they got abandoned. And so be very careful what you ask for. When you're asking for something, I want attention. Make sure you add in positive attention for having a great idea, for being a loving person. I want love. Make sure that I want love that lasts my entire life, someone that loves my soul and I love theirs. I want success, you know, make sure you add what that is. So the, it's the detail and the commanding, compelling, directing, instructing is giving tremendous detail. I, I command perfect eyesight. And again, even the word wanting, I want it. I wish for it. I dream of it. That's not good enough. Wishing says, go on wishing. You never have it. Well, why don't you dream of it? Because that's all it's ever given. But when you say, I demand it, I instruct it, I compel my body to give it to me, your mind goes, oh, I get that. This is really important. This is not a wish or a dream or a hope. You are demanding, commanding, instructing, coding, directing your mind to give it to you. 
And the mind is powerful beyond belief. You know, we, we have really no idea how powerful we are. 